hunting horn in France, or the Tombe de Chasse is what it was called. Um, you've probably seen them on Christmas trees. It's just a mouthpiece and then a couple of turns and a, and a bell. Very simple instrument, only plays a few notes. So to make signals, you'd have to play melodies and different rhythms, and they actually developed melodies and rhythms for every use, what you were chasing and who was chasing it, where it was going, what you were going to do afterwards. The after party is really where the transition from the signal instrument to a musical instrument came. Because the master of the hunt, who took care of the dogs and the horns, coincidentally, um, was responsible for remembering everything that happened in the course of the hunt. So at the banquet, when the fruits of the hunt were prepared and everybody was partying, the horns would be called upon to recreate the hunt that they all participated in. It sort of started to work its way into the art world because the wealthy folks who were enjoying the hunt also enjoyed opera. And so composers would write the hunting horns into the opera scenes to curry favor with their patrons. The hunting horn being a very simple instrument of a fixed length would play in only one key at a time. So that means every time you had to change keys, you had to change horns. What happened was uh, somebody realized that if you're coiling horns, maybe you could do a situation where the horn itself could be modified. I can actually take this apart and remove or add a length of tubing. And all of a sudden we have a horn in a different key. And to give you an idea of how different, this is a shorter horn. This is in the key of G, and it plays higher notes. Nice bubbly kind of a sound. Haydn was very fond of the key of G. If I add this double coil, you can see there's two, one tube coiled around twice. The entire horn drops fourth to the key of D, and the timbre changes as well. This was the first means that we had for using one instrument to play in every key. But that does mean that you have to sort of carry a lot of pipes with you in order to meet with every possible musical um, demand. For every open note, if I close my hand, I get a second set of notes. So I've really effectively doubled the number of notes that I have. And on some of the notes, if I really close the hand tightly, the air column actually backs up inside the horn. The tone gets very nasal, but we also get new notes. So by this means, we've actually tripled the number of notes we have, and that means we actually have all the notes available to us that a violinist or a pianist does. What these instruments reveal about the music itself is not really attainable any other way. You really have to let the instrument guide you. really knows what's going on and he allows us to explore this and encourages it. It's absolutely illuminating every time we play.